<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. This is pretty exciting for us because it's only seven weeks until our US trip. Yes. We are really looking forward to it. It's starting 1st of July and we are staying there for three weeks. Yeah. And fitting to this topic, I also can announce that we finally have completed the challenge, the art challenge that I did with Corey Simpson. His channel will be linked down there as well. He is super cute, he's adorable. You really should have a look at his channel. And way back a couple of months ago, we challenged him to try acrylic pouring because it's fun to do. <laughs> and he actually never really did it. And he, of course, revenged himself and challenged me to make some, well, let's say, surrealistic painting, including some sea topics, so whales or dolphins or something like that. Because I do very rarely work in animal paintings. And this is the video combining both uh, pieces. So you will see me painting something surrealistic with acrylic pouring and some sea life. You will see his video in the end of my video. And I really hope you have a look at his channel, share some love, give him some comments. He is super cute, we love him and he deserves more followers. And you should encourage him to do more acrylic pouring just because it's fun and messy. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically it. If you would like to support us for our trip to the US, we have an Etsy store full of paintings waiting to be picked up for a new lovely home. And other than that, enjoy the video, enjoy the painting and see you soon. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Before I even started sketching, I made an underpainting on my canvas. This time I decided for black, sometimes I use brown or dark blue. I think it helps me judging the values. At least I think it does. It is just easier to see the lights and the darks in a relative perspective when it comes to painting instead of painting on a white canvas. But this of course is always a question of taste. If you like to paint on a white surface, just go ahead. If you like to tone it down, go ahead as well. I switch between both methods every now and then. When everything was painted black and I just used a black acrylic paint and let it dry of course, I started out sketching. I used a white pencil for this and I already had something in mind that I wanted to yeah, achieve with this painting in the end, but I was not so sure about the design itself. I knew I wanted to have a planet there and some moons because I wanted it to become some kind surrealistic with a space scene topic and some sea animals along there just to, to make it work out together, I'd say. And therefore I just was sketching everything in as I thought it will look nice in the end. There is a huge planet in the background, I added some moons as well. And besides that there was the surface of the sea along some rails. I wanted some of the whales to come out of some clouds, like they were jumping out of the water, but basically jumping out of clouds. When the design was done and I had a plan about the color scheme, I just used some acrylic paints and started painting the first layer, which is the background layer. I wanted it to be somewhat dark, so like in a night scene. So as if the sun was already down and the brightest part shall be the planet in the background. Working as a gas giant there. When it comes to the base layer that I was painting here, I just opted for the colors that I want to use for each segment. And this is not meant to be the entirely perfect color that it will be ending up in the end. This is basically just the color that I want each part to be in. And I can control the light and the dark even later when I make the final layers, for which I decided to go for in oils, because I can work much better in oils than I can work in acrylics. I'm just not used to paint with them when it comes to really painting with a brush. And I just prefer oil colors over the acrylics when it comes to blending and such. But again, if you're used to use acrylic colors and you don't want to use oils, you can just go ahead and continue with your acrylics and layer up there you will get pretty much the same effect in the end. The good thing with this background layer is it goes really quickly. For the entire thing, I needed about 30 minutes to complete it, so to have every color kind of in place and to get an overall idea if the color scheme works out in general. And of course, when this layer was dry, there was the decision making about how to continue with each layer. Of course, you usually start with the background because you do not want to start with the foreground objects and paint the background around them. You will always see that you did that and it really will give you a hard time. So I usually really start with the background and this in this case was the huge planet. 
I want it, of course, to make it fit with this channel here, <laughs> a poured planet. I did not really want to pour directly on the canvas because I only have kind of limited space to work on there. But I put the colors over there, put some silicone in the colors and just swiped it. This is basically also the best version to get this planet gas giant effect because you get the cells in this swiping motion direction. So this one really works great and I have done this so often with my space scenes and I also showed you this so often. Of course you could have also made the separate swipe on another sheet of clear paper perhaps or UPO paper, whatever you want to use for it and cut it out, glue it on there. But as this is basically meant to be a painting, like a real painting, I would have seen this cutting edge. And this in this case is something I really did not want to do there. Because this was not meant to have a resin layer or something like that in the end, which would have leveled out everything so that you cannot see that something was glued on there. So for resin space scenes, this is a perfectly usable method, but this will only get a oil color varnish, which is like, like nothing. <laughs> it is just a very, very thin layer. And of course, as this is the part where the most paint is sitting, this had to dry again for a day, I'd say. It was not very much color, but I wanted it to be really dry before I start adding any other color to the canvas to not bump anything in there. I know I'm clumsy enough to do that. And so I just set it aside and did something else. Next step involves playing with my airbrush. I really like working with the airbrush because it gives you these smooth transitions. So when it comes to a sunlit surface like the planet or a moon itself, which is hit by sunlight and shines or these clouds, which I still think don't really look like clouds in the end, where the light of the planet hit or whatever surface that needs some smooth blending, the airbrush is a really, really cool and easy to use method to achieve this. Also this area where the planet goes into the dark, so in the shadow area where I added just the black over it, it really works super great. And it doesn't need to be a really expensive one. I just got a very basic, you know, children airbrush. If you want to say that, it's really a cheap one and nothing, nothing really fancy. So it only can spray the paint out. It cannot even control so much of it. But so far, for all the projects that I have done on my channel so far, it really was enough. There was nothing else that I would have needed instead of this really basic airbrush. And after this, it basically was more or less playing around with colors. And there are areas where I did not really add any oil paints over it, especially for the sky scene, for example. I just remained with the acrylics there. You can get really pretty effects with the acrylics alone by just thinning paints down and glazing over it and making some dots and stuff. This is all acrylics. When it comes to the sea, it's also mostly acrylics, but I glazed over some areas with oil paints just for the opaqueness, if this is a word, <laughs> um, just to color in some areas. It is pretty hard with acrylics making dark areas lighter so that they are opaque, standing out, vibrant, which is easier to achieve with glazing some oil colors over it. And it's also pretty easy to color shift some areas and such, but basically it was more or less jumping around with oil colors and acrylic colors. Something you need to keep in mind though, if you work in both mediums and you've used acrylics, there is no problem with going over there with oil paints. But if you have used oil paints already on whatsoever part of the painting, you cannot go over there with acrylics. This will not be archival and you will run into issues later on. So if you have added oil colors over one certain area, you cannot go over with acrylics anymore. So this is just something for you to keep in mind. And other than that, I was just adding colors, glazing, letting it dry in between and putting some colors over it just to get the effect that I wanted to achieve. I still over the entire process had the feeling that the clouds that I was adding there don't really look like clouds, more like, I don't know, hills, mountains or such. They were meant to somewhat hover over the ocean, but it looks as if they are sitting on there. So if you have a tip there for me, how to paint decent clouds from this perspective to make them look as if they were really clouds, let me know. An easy way would be nice to know. <laughs> so Cory, perhaps you can give me a tip.
and do not speed up everything too much because there is not so much more to tell on this um, painting method that I'm using here, so you can see what I'm doing. I just let play the music and get back to you in the end when it's close to finished. And when it came to the end, I really liked the background. I did not like so much the clouds. Still looked like looked like mountains. I don't know. I liked the bells in the background, but I had a feeling that something still was missing. I needed some more contrast or some more cool idea, perhaps, to make it look more interesting or whatever. And I just came with the idea of adding some fireflies, which are fire flying around these rails. So I just used some dots of uh, yellow and white paint and painted them around them. In my head it was supposed to look some kind of magical or mystical or something, you know, this sparkle of magic and energy in the painting. I really didn't know if I managed to do this. Let me know. <laughs> I really like how they came out in the smaller background veils. I really like those. I wasn't really sure about the 
foregrounds, fireflies flying around the large veil. So I'm really up for your, for your critiques. Let me know what you think about it. It was a project that I've never done before, or even if I did once, it's ages ago. I don't know. I really like the concept though. But you tell me if I did a good job or if you would have done something different. If you used a different color palette, if you like this night scenery kind of look, let me know. So this was so different for me. Because I jumped into this project with the opinion, okay, I can do portraits, how difficult can a whale be? They, they can be really tricky. <laughs> so lesson learned for me. And it was, it, it was fun. So I really liked the end result with some pros and cons that I have on my side. Let me know if you want to see probably more of those projects. If so, I am open for suggestions as usual. If you would like to get in touch with me, my social media links are linked below in the video description. And of course, if you're new to my channel and liked what you've seen, please leave me a thumbs up and even better, subscribe to my channel to not miss out any of my new videos, which are currently coming about two times a week. We will see. <laughs> And of course, I really thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to jump on here real quick to tell Michael thank you for sending me such a beautiful painting, as you see right here. A few months ago, we gave each other an art challenge. I challenged him to do something pertaining to whales, and he challenged me to do something pertaining to art pours. I'm really impressed with what he created. It's beautiful, it's amazing, it's colorful, it's just, I love it. And he gave it to me, and I'm really thankful. So thank you so much, Michael. Um, if you guys are ever interested in seeing any of my artwork, I actually did this one. Um, it's so hard to see on camera. Um, it's very shiny. I tried my first ever Technically my first ever official acrylic pour um, Just like you guys see Michael do all the time on his videos. It's very dark um, especially with the Luna moth painted on top, but I Love doing it. I have to say it was one of the more fun Pieces of artwork I've ever created and I wanted to thank him again for inspiring me to do it and I uh, I hope you guys continue to follow Michael because he's a fantastic artist and I love him. We're great friends. I love him and Patrick. And uh, yeah, if you guys are ever interested in seeing any of my work, I'm sure you could stop on by and see if there's anything you're interested in and watching me do. But please keep supporting Michael for the rest of his art career because he really deserves it. He's a fantastic person and super generous because he did not have to send me this. I have a big soft spot for whales. But yeah. Thank you, Michael. You're the best.